Next up, I got from the heart of Newport, straight from your community, Theo Joseph. He's going to give us a little extemporaneous discourse or uh, rhetoric from the heart. <laughs> I try my best. Thank you. Um, before I speak, I'm just going to give the mic to a couple kids. They're going to say something real quick. Hello, everybody. My name is Natural Joseph, and being black is my flanks, my biggest flanks. Um, What's going on today has been going on from, for many of years now, many of ages, and we are tired. Are you guys tired? Yeah. Are you guys tired? Yeah. Okay. Um, all I want to say is keep supporting us, and we, we I love you, cause I love everybody over here, because you guys are supporting everybody, and you guys are just, you guys, everybody here is wonderful. You guys are great. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Live. Hello, and thank you to everyone who came out today and has come out to all the protests across the country and across the world. I want to shout out all the white people that are here that continue to show up to fight injustice. We need you and we love you for that. I want to shout out the LGBTQ community. Who always shows up to fight injustice. Together we rise, divided we fall. Yesterday I was asked by Brother Gary to give a speech. When he asked me, I was immediately scared. I was worried that the speech would not be powerful enough. And if I'm going to give a speech, I want it to match your passion and your dedication to the cause. So here it goes. My name is Theophilus Deckety Joseph Jr. I am an entrepreneur and a social justice activist. I run a company called Most High Industries in Johnston, Rhode Island. We specialize in working with youth, um, developing their skills, teaching them how to be entrepreneurs like ourselves, sending them off to college getting them an education, and then hiring them to work for us as executives. Now that's where we need to go. Today, we have about 20 kids from Providence, Rhode Island that are involved in our programs. And we have four going to college this year, and we'll be helping them. So I'm 27 years old, and for the past 20 years, I've lived in the United States of America after being born in Mama Liberia. I'm so proud to be a part of this movement. First and foremost, I want to address all my white friends, especially in Johnston, Rhode Island, where I grew up for most of my childhood. To my white friends and everyone who thinks like them, that constantly brings up black on black violence when we say black lives matter. An overwhelming percentage of black-on-black -black violence is directly related to gang violence, with the exception of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Black-on-black -black violence is limited and avoidable. As a black man who has spent 20 years in this country, the last time I've experienced black-on-black -black violence was when I was a seven-year-old kid walking home from school with my sister, and a group of kids stole a bag of chips from us. <laughs> then they brought it back when she started to cry. <laughs> if I'm not being clear, I don't experience black on black violence. The closest I come to black on black violence is a black is when I'm talking trash in the basketball court. But while we're on the subject, let's talk about the meat and potatoes of black on black violence. Drugs, alcohol, and guns. For the stereotypical purpose, Let's talk about our local drug dealer and gang member. And let's call him Ray Ray. White America, please tell me how Ray Ray, who doesn't even own a car, has access to thousands of dollars worth of drugs. Please tell me how Ray Ray, who doesn't, I'm sorry, who never has money to throw down for gas, always has money and access to thousands of dollars worth of guns and ammunition. How is it that Ray Ray, who dropped out of the eighth grade, 
is able to form and orchestrate such a sophisticated method of finding and a manufacturer of drugs, smuggling it into the U.S., yeah. establishing sophist sophisticated routes to get the drugs yeah. to the distributor, while avoiding law enforcement to distribute the drugs to people on the streets. Yeah. I'm a I'm college I'm a college education educated man, and my wife a college graduate. I nor her will not will even know where to start to put some to orchestrate something so sophisticated with so many moving parts. So I'll tell you how it's possible. It's possible because Ray Ray is not the guilty person responsible. Ray Ray is the, is the guy being used to take the blame for Brad. The J.P. Morgan executive. Y'all thought we forgot about that one. It's possible because the real criminals wear suits and ties. The real criminals sit in their corner offices downtown. The real criminals run for political office. The real criminals wear a badge. And the real criminals keep their hands clean. Black on black violence is just yet another consequence that the black community has to pay for the wrongdoings of their white oppressors. But there's no way, there's no way to avoid police brutality. It doesn't matter how educated I am. It doesn't matter what my occupation is. It doesn't matter how I dress. All that matters is the color of my skin. So don't tell me about black on black violence. Because before I worry about black on black violence, I have to first Remove your white, racially oppressive knee off my black neck. Yeah. To all my people out there who are more vocal about the riots than about the real injustice, I say to you after all this time with little to no progression, I say to you, do we not have the right to be this angry? Is, it, is this not the same America who responded to the first black president by calling him a terrorist, by hanging him in effigy, by saying he was not born here, by electing the most openly racist president possible, possibly in the history of this country? Let that sink in, that Donald Trump is in the same boat as the presidents who owned slaves. Is this not still the country that brought over slaves in the early 1600s? Is this not still a country that murdered Native Americans and stole their land? Is this not still the country that host, Nat, that, that host the Nat Turner's revolt, as well as an entire civil war, just so a black man can no longer be considered property? Is this not still a country that killed millions of people because of the color of their skin? Is this not still a country that lynched and burned our people and our properties? Is this not still a country that murdered Emmett Till, an innocent child? Is this not still a country that fought an entire war overseas to free Jewish people from Hitler? Why, while at the same time, not allowing people of color to eat with them? to talk to them, to work with them, to go to school with them, to drink from the same fountain as them, or even, or even to sit next to them. Is this not still the same country that burned down Black Wall Street? Is this not still the same country that implemented redlining? Is this not still the same country that forced drugs into our community as well as violence? then immediately wage war on us because of the drugs and violence. Is this not still the same country who assassinated the president that abolished slavery? Is this not still the same country who assassinated the president that was about to abolish segregation? 
is this not Citizen Kochi that assassinated one of the most prominent freedom fighters in black history, yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King? Yeah. Is this not still the same country that is doing the same old shit, just a different day? Yeah. To all my people out there, who are saying you can protest peacefully, but no need to destroy and loot. First of all, protesters and looters are not the same. Secondly, secondly, have you forgotten your history, white America? are one, if not only, the most violent human beings in recent civilized histories. We had, yes sir, we had a saying growing up, ain't that the pot calling the tea kettle black? Now to you, Mr. President, and your supporters, it is clear that you are a racist. We need no more evidence. We need no more evidence of that. You have given us an overwhelming abundance, and enough is enough. You are clearly unfit to be the leader of the most diverse nation on earth. Yeah. 